Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today I'll be playing another traditional draft of the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth. Without further ado, let's scoop up our pack one, pick one. Not sure what it's going to be here. There's several powerful uncommons, mainly Build a Pony and Saruman the White. Also a pretty good rare with Smeagol Helpful Guide, but that does put us into black-green right off the bat, so it is a bit restrictive color-wise. There's a Rally at the Hornburg as the best common. A lot of good stuff going on here. I think I'm going to roll with Bill the Pony, stay a little bit open here. I've been just a huge fan of Bill for pretty much any white deck. A 4-mana 1-4 that kind of attacks and blocks is a 4-4 four four with that sack ability. Means that it's a really, really good ring bearer since it can't be blocked by creatures with higher power than itself, but it still attacks as though it's dealing 4 damage. So Bill's pretty nice with that. Plus, there's a lot of food token synergies you can get. Bill can do a lot of stuff. And for pick two, we've got two ridiculously good black uncommons. We do still have another Saruman the White, which is a pretty solid blue uncommon as well. But I think we take one of these because these are just busted. March from the Black Gate can get you started with amassing orcs early. And then your orc army just steamrolls into something incredibly big. Voracious Fell Beast is a really good way to try to flip the game around. Making your opponent sack a creature and getting a food token and getting a 4-4 flyer is just a lot of stuff off just one card. This can absolutely flip a game that was going poorly back into your favor, so I really like Voracious Fell Beast at the top end. Take the Fell Beast here. This pack is loaded when it comes to black and white cards, though, which is a little awkward, because that's where we're starting with Bill into Voracious Fell Beast. So it's definitely going to probably put some other players into black-white as well towards our left. So pick three Gandalf Sanction, we could take that as a bit of a sign that we could head in that direction. If I scoop it up, I don't get to play any of the other cards I've taken, though. Don't get to play Bill or Voracious Fell Beast. And Urukai Berserker is a very good black common that would stick with what we're taking so far. We have uh, passed a couple copies of Rally at the Hornburg to the left as well, so we've passed good red stuff. And some Sarm on the Whites. We've really passed good stuff in pretty much every color, so there's actually no telling for sure what we're putting the people to our left into. There's just been a lot of good cards early here. Stay a little open here. I'll take the Gandalf Sanction, and I'm interested in seeing what we get past the most rather than considering what we're passing, because we're passing good stuff everywhere. All right, pick four. This pack is significantly weaker than the last few. Nothing here I'm all that excited about. War Beast of Gorgroth can be okay in the red-black decks. It's not really going to do anything in blue-red, so I'm not really interested. East Farthing Farmer, Took Reaper, and Banish from Adorus are all kind of relu reluctant playables in white. There's obviously nothing in black. Green doesn't even have anything good. Peregrine can be if you have a massive amount of food production, but it's not a super consistent strategy. Let's take a Sook Reaper, I guess. Pick five now. Well, there's some black cards still. Also a really good card for the blue-red deck. The Gandalf Sanction deck can really use Lorien Revealed, because you can island cycle it early, get a sorcery into your graveyard easy, or you can use it for huge, huge, huge card advantage later as a draw three. I actually think Lorien Revealed is really, really good to where I will take it over. Haunt of the Dead Marshes is probably the best black common for if we're going black-white. But I'll take the Lorien Revealed. There's a Peller Gear Survivor still in here for the blue-red sort of archetype. Really, really nice for that. One, three bodies are just good in general for blocking ring bearers early. Once the ring bearers are level three and they force you to sack your blocker, that doesn't matter as much. But uh, the mana fixing from this card is great as well. The mana ramp for your instants and sorceries, which is the majority of your deck when you're playing blue-red. Really like the survivor. Good black common still. I do like Shellob's Ambush a lot. But we'll take a Pellar Gear survivor. And there we go. Pick 7 Fiery Inscription. Excellent sign for the blue-red spells deck. Also a pick 7 Urukai Berserker. Not a bad sign at all for black. That is very late for that card. But... I see a Fire Inscription and a Gandalf Sanction. I'm going to head into the Blue-Red Spells deck, where Deceive the Messenger is a great cheap card against your opponent's early aggressive dorks. You definitely need to have some cheap spells to stay alive against aggressive strategies. 
Don't like any of these cards in blue red. Luckily, I don't like any of these in black white either. So this is kind of just a mulligan of a pack. I'll take the goblin over the uh, blue combat trick thing, I guess. Well, that's a protector of Gondor still in here, and Spearmaster is really not going to be exciting. In blue red, everything's kind of drying up here. All right, Hithlane Knots is certainly playable for blue red. Bunch of poop again. We'll have to see what we open up in pack two, but I do think... I did put white back in here because we got a late Protector of Gondor, but I do think it is very, very likely we're trying to be blue-red with Sanction plus Inscription. I don't think red is very open, but blue seems perfectly open. All right, now we'll just rare draft a red Mythic rare. Pack two, pick one. Could take Sauron's Ransom here and try to push towards blue-black. Then I would have to splash in Fiery Inscription and Gandalf Sanction most likely. Don't like splashing an Inscription a lot, but splashing in a Sanction's not bad, because you basically never want to cast Gandalf Sanction until very late in the game anyway. But Fiery Inscription, you want this to be like the first spell you play before you start rolling out instants and sorceries. So if you're stuck off of your splash color, it's very bad. So I think I'm just going to take Saruman's Trickery. Like, that's definitely going to make the cut. It's a phenomenal counter spell because you get to counter something and get a nice little blocker there with your Orc army. I'm going to take the Trickery, but Sauron's Ransom was a little tempting there. It does have the Ring Tempts You in its text box. Well, this pack is a complete dud for us. On the plus side, if I was still drafting white-black, I'd only get like a Westfold Rider anyway. This pack just a bit of a dirtle fest. Best card in the pack is probably the Rangers for green. That's just not an exciting pack for anybody. Really going to try hard not to play any of these, but I'll take a random... Uh, I'll take the Flash Blue Creature. Because if we end up with a bunch of instant speed blue counter spells, being able to drop a creature out when we don't have to counter something should be okay. Here's a Smite the Deathless, great red burn spell. We see a Golem still in the pack, pack two, pick three. It's good black stuff. I think I take the Smite here, maybe wield the Glorious Scale because blue's been a lot more open. Now we've got another Deceive the Messenger, which is fantastic. Another Smite the Deathless. Beautiful stuff. Definitely want those cheap removal spells in this archetype. Treason of Isengard's very reasonable when you're running Gandalf Sanction. As a way to buy it back. Here's a Rally at the Hornburg, which is a great cheap card for this deck, because you want your creatures to be spells as well, that's why Deceive the Messenger is also quite nice, which we'll take here. Uh, I think I'd rather take Surrounded by Orcs than Athelian Kingfisher in this archetype. But it's very close, because Kingfisher is significantly better in a vacuum. But being able to play Surrounded by Orcs as a sorcery to fill your grave and a creature at the same time is really nice, especially since you can mill yourself with it too to really fuel that Gandalf sanction. So I'll take the Surrounded by Orcs. I'm not going to play any of these. We're in a pretty okay spot here. I don't think this draft has gone perfectly i think we've opened enough and been passed enough powerful black cards that the dream seat here we'd want to be in a black deck probably blue black by the looks of things but we picked up a sanction and an inscription during pack one so i don't think it was unreasonable to try to push into blue red plus we got two smite the deathless and a rally at the hornburg this pack Red is not looking as completely shut off as it was during uh, pack one, where we really only saw the blue-red gold cards. 
So I don't hate our spot here. I do think it could be better. Probably blue-black as the spot to be. Cast Into the Fire is solid sideboard material, since this is a best-of-three draft. And we have... That is so sad. We are in the only archetype in the entire format that does not windmill slam Andrel and be incredibly happy about it. This card's completely absurd in any deck that can equip this to anything and attack one time. Because you attack one time, spit out two 1 1 flyers, and then you can just, even if the creature that attacked died, equip it to one of the flyers and keep attacking. I'm still going to take it, I'm still going to play it but we're in one of the lowest creature count archetypes in the entire format, so we're in the literal worst archetype for the card. But I think even in the worst archetype for this card, it's one of the strongest cards in the whole format, and it's worth taking over four of Orcs, which would be incredible for our deck. Andrew is just busted. Now we've got the Bath Song, and again, we're just opening up incredible black cards, Golem's Bite, Urukai Berserker. Would have been a great blue-black deck, but the Bath Song is... Fantastic card draw, so I'm happy to take that here. No good blue or red. At least there's no good black this time. Don't have to feel bad about that. I think I'm literally just going to rare draft. Well, I should probably take a second cast into the fire. Because I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not a ton of creatures. But... This archetype doesn't want that many creatures outside of our Andril Flame of the West. Now I'll take an Arwen's Gift. Another Pellard Gear Survivor is great. This is ridiculous. Vanguard and Tormento Golem still here. Got a place at everything. I'm just going to hate a Torment of Golem. Ooh, that's a pack for us. I think we're on Glorious Gale. Seeing as I have none of those yet, we're definitely not on Deceive the Messenger. It's Glorious Scale or Second Knots, but I'm going to take Glorious Scale. That flyer is pretty good too, that 4 mana 3 3 flyer. Isolation at Orthanc is okay. That's 23 cards now. Another Surrounded by Orcs is 24. We've got a Lorien Revealed to swap a land for. Columns Bite pick 10. Absurd. Absolutely absurd. I feel like our deck probably wants to hit land drops enough to just run 17 lands plus a Lorien Revealed. Because sure, our curve is low, but with draw spells like Lorien and Arwen's Gift and Bath Song, we're going to want to cast multiple cards on future turns a lot, like a 3 drop and a 2 drop or two three drops we can do some expensive stuff later just playing multiple spells in one turn so i think this is probably just the deck list everything that we've cut right now we just run this 17 lands plus lorian revealed call it a deck there yeah none of our sideboard cards are really main deckable outside of the gray havens navigators but i really don't want to start with those in or a battle scarred goblin just some really filler stuff that could be additions to this deck, but I think the best starting build we've got access to is the one that we've chosen here. And again, our creature count's a lot better than it looks, because we have Triple Deceive. We have Rally at the Hornburg, Treason of Isengard, Saruman's Trickery, Triple Surrounded by Orcs. And this archetype doesn't want that many creatures anyway. We have 17... Instance and Sorceries in this deck for Inscription and Gandalf Sanction, which is pretty good. We have Triple Surrounded by Orcs for the Sanction. We have a Bath Song for a late game win as well. Just shuffling everything back into our deck and loading our deck up. We've got Andril for a Bomb Rare. It's like a pretty strong deck. All right, here's a look at today's deck list. It's going to be a nice little blue-red spells deck. Not an incredible version of this deck, not a terrible version either. We've got some bad filler like this random goblin, but other than that, there's not too much when it comes to terrible filler in this deck. We just don't have a ton of the payoffs. We have one fiery inscription, 
one Gandalf Sanction, and one Bath Song as our really big, really powerful spells that can close out a game. If we get an inscription down early, we get to ping our opponent just as we're casting spells throughout the game until they die. With Gandalf Sanction, we can finish somebody off late in the game because we do have 18 instants and sorceries in this deck. And with the Bath Song, we can go for kind of a control victory where we use this for a lot of card advantage so that we're ahead in cards, we keep them under control for a while, and then make sure that we just shuffle all of our best cards back into our deck so we are much more likely to draw good cards than our opponent from that point on. We also have an incredible bomb rare that's great in any deck, the Andoril Flame of the West. This is significantly weaker in our deck than it would be in others, but that just brings it down from an S++ tier bomb rare to still an A level bomb that is going to win most of the games we draw it in. As long as we have a creature on the board, we can equip that creature, get an attack, and get two tapped 1-1 one, one flyers, and then equip this to one of those flyers and just keep doing our thing from that point on, which is pretty absurd. We've got a lot more creatures than it looks like, so this isn't going to be just working with these three. We have three Deceive the Messenger, Rally at the Hornburg, Treason of Isengard, Saruman's Trickery, and three Surrounded by Orcs as our instants and sorceries that produce creatures, so that helps with Andoril quite a bit. Other than that, it's just the general blue-red stuff. It's kind of a counter-burn deck, kind of a controlling strategy. We're going to use early spells like Deceive the Messenger and Smite the Deathless to trade off into our opponent's aggressive threats. Later on, when they start casting bigger, scarier cards, we're going to counter them with Saruman's Trickery and Glorious Scale. We can slow our opponent down and set up our draws with Hithlane Knots, and we can do some big self-mill stuff to make Gandalf Sanction stronger with a few Surrounded by Orcs and get ahead in card advantage with Arwen's Gift, Lorien Revealed, and the Bath Song. So classic blue-red spells stuff today. We'll go ahead and see how it does as we get into the gameplay. And we will be on the play for game one. I'll definitely keep the hand. We've got the fiery inscription to start things off. Gonna drop my island so I have the option to deceive the messenger early if I need to, but unless they play a particularly powerful one toughness creature, I would prefer to wait until after we play the fiery inscription. And they're just gonna land cycle in eagles of the north for now. West Fold Rider. Okay, can't kill that with Receive right now anyway. Let's just drop the... Well, I guess they could just kill our Inscription. That's really annoying. Still just gonna run it out. Don't think it's better to Deceive and then Inscription afterwards. If we just spend this as a 3-mana blow up a West Fold Rider, that's fine. Because if the game goes long against a white, more aggressive deck, we're likely to win anyway. Because we have card advantage spells that they probably won't. So if we just pop a Fiery Inscription as just blow up the Westfold Rider, I think that's fine. They are curving out with an Aowen next turn, which makes the Rider even better. They can give it first strike if we play any blockers. Redundant Vigilance for the win, cool. Now... Two surrounded by orcs. I might be interested in milling our opponent if I know we're stacking up at least two of these already. Because I don't have a trees and vising guard in my hand. Yeah, I think I'd rather just start milling my opponent. Because we might mill our trees and vising guard and our Gandalf sanction if I mill myself like nine cards. Which is what I would do if I use both of these targeting ourselves. Okay, so they are white-black. They've got Errand Rider, a Gondor, Land Rebel, Horizon Witness. Pretty strong deck. Shire Terrace is going to find a Swamp. Eagles of the North is going to Plain Cycle. Saruman's Trickery. 
So hold up trickery or deceive. They are white black, so they are likely to have removal that can kill a gigantic army eventually. Mirkwood bats? I think I would rather isolate that than trickery it. Let them redraw it a few turns from now. Actually, I could just mill it with surrounded by orcs. But I definitely don't need to counter it. One mana off from being able to surrounded by orcs and still hold up the trickery. Should probably start getting aggressive. They're never going to attack in. So deceive is not going to kill Eowyn on blocks. Urkai Berserker. First ring tempt is fine. Now Eowyn can just get past our blocker every turn. Because Eowyn is going to be less power with the ring. I'm not worried about stopping our opponent from tempting the ring until they're going to hit level 2 and draw and discard a card every turn. Alright, cool. Now I can surround it by orcs and hold up Saruman's trickery. Bunch of protector of Gondors and stuff, it looks like. They're gonna start attacking us for five a turn. Trickery that. Shire Sheriff, no tokens on their board. Well, I don't think we win the race if we attack. Well, I guess we put them to five cards in library. Oh, they've got a golem's bite and a golem in there. It's pretty good. So they can. They actually don't want the ring to tempt them again because they have to draw and discard. Yeah, they have to draw a card and discard a card, which would actually be really bad for them. So we want the ring to tempt them again. They look like just a really solid black-white deck. They've got a Gandalf, Samwise, a Golem, a bunch of Protector of Gondors, Errand Rider of Gondor. It's a very strong deck from our opponent. Some Took Reapers for ring tempt. Oh my god, they're going for it. Four cards in library. They're going for the draw a card, discard a card every turn. I'm cool with it. Faramir as well. We've only see, seen Bitter Downfall for removal, so they probably have more removal. It's just in the bottom four here.
I'm drawn to like a hiss lane knots or some kind of interaction like that. I think we we've got this, but it's possible that I just draw dead and then I die. That is not drawn dead. This lethals them in one shot, they have to chump. And then I just deceive whatever they attack with. Three cards in their library. They might just chump with the uh, ring bearer at this point. Nope. Chump with the sheriff. Two cards in library. If they declare an attack, they have one card left. And they can't declare an attack with a ring bearer next turn where they die. Two milling out. The Farmir. Beginning of your end step, if a creature died under their control, they draw a card. Well, now I wish I had a blocker up. They've got two Farmir in there as well. That can draw them extra cards. Go down to one card in their library. And they have one turn to kill me after this. If I deceive now, and then they post-combat claim the precious, the 11-11. I still don't die because they can't attack with the ring bearer next turn. Yeah, I think I'm safe to deceive now. Alright. And there's a Trumper. It's got one power as well, so it can block the Ring Bearer. Alright, they have to chump. Here's our chumper. If they declare an attack with the ring bearer, they mill out. We're at 8 life. I'm not sure how they could kill us here. I think we've got this. Okay, so we need to keep in mind for future games, they've got a really good grindy deck. They have two Faramirs that draw them cards as their creatures die. And they have um, they have a lot of the ring tempts you, so they can set up that draw and discard a card every turn. So I think in hindsight, our, our early decision to just slam down the fire inscription was wrong, and probably probably even without hindsight, to be fair, um, since we had the deceive, I should have just waited and deceived the three one. But definitely with hindsight, knowing that their deck is loaded with ways to draw extra cards, get two-for-ones potentially with cards like Shire Sheriff, um, lots of the ring tempts you so that they can draw a discard. They can grind out a long game for sure. They can they can stay up and in card advantage, filter out any lands to not flood out, make sure they still have stuff coming, so... I don't think we're actually okay with them blowing up inscription ever. We need some some fuel to our fire. I don't think there's anything I really want to side in though. I guess our three two flashes are fine against the Faramirs. They're not good against the Aowen, but they only had one Aowen, two Faramirs, and a bunch of three threes and one ones mostly. Yeah, the three twos are fine. I just don't know what isn't fine, because deceives are fine against them. 
Maybe Battle Scarred Goblin. Cut a goblin for a Grey Haven's Navigator here. I think that's all I'm going to do. I guess we are on the draw this game, pretty much guaranteed, so we could put in two Navigator and cut one land, because we dig one card deeper, we draw one extra card on the draw. Do that. That seems fine to me. I don't know how we won that game. I feel like their deck is better than ours. We just got pretty lucky with drawing all of our mill cards in one game. Alright, this is a reasonable control hand for sure. Bath Song is kind of the finisher here. Turn one, plane cycling the Eagles of the North again. There's a Took Reaper that we can deceive. That's going to be great. No. Gonna play Survivor first. Getting the Mana Dork out first is always important. It's like choosing to play another land versus not. You always want to get the extra lands out initially. We didn't see any combat tricks in their deck at all, and we milled a lot, so we saw the majority of their deck. There were a few cards in their hand we never saw, but I don't think we play around combat tricks in this matchup. So if they declared that took Reaper attack, I think we just slam dunk. Worst case scenario, we see what like the one combat trick in their deck is, and then we can play around it perfectly in the future if we get a game three. Sam, why is the stout hearted? Cannot counter him. But that's fine, because he's not getting any graveyard recursion value here. I'm actually moderately surprised they weren't okay with doing a trump attack with Reaper, because then Samwise would be a level 2 ring bearer here. They could start drawing and discarding a card if they get our Peller Gear Survivor out of the way. But I suppose that's why they didn't, is that we have a 1-3 blocker, so it's not like any of their creatures as a level 2 ring bearer could even get in right now. All right, well, this is going to be pretty good for us. We're going to give them a new ring bearer, but we are also going to kill both of these creatures without losing anybody. And I need to do it this way, because if I make Samwise a negative 1-1, one, one, then we can't block it because it's a ring bearer. We don't have any creatures with negative 1 power. So we got to do it like that. Probably isolation the soldier if they make that the ring bearer. Although, I can still just block it with a 1-3, like, we're doing A-OK. -okay. I think my blocks are good enough on board to just slam down the Bath Song. They have to kill both our creatures to not lose this, um... This Ring Bearer. I do like playing a land next turn. I'm gonna get rid of... The Navigator? Navigator trades one for one its protector, though. Don't we're getting rid of Rally or Surrounded. I mean, this is going to shuffle everything back in, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. I'm going to get rid of Isolation here, I think. Pass from there. We might be milling them again. I was not expecting to do this twice in a row, but we've got a Surrounded by Orcs in hand and a Survivor on board that can mill three later. Alright, land roll was really bad for us, because now... Oh, never mind. Okay, I already couldn't block Protector of Gondor well, so we're very happy with this. I was going to say this is really bad for us, because now we can't kill the Ring Bearer, so they get to draw and discard a card twice. But they didn't give the ring bearer flying, so we are A-OK -okay with that. Ooh, fiery inscription. Never mind. We could mill ourselves if we want to, because I think we're trying to damage them out. Okay, I don't need the fifth land right now, so I'll discard it. Or the sixth land right now. Drop the fiery inscription. 
Level one ring bearing survivor. Knots the land roval. Actually don't know. Maybe it's rallies though. Protector can't attack well on the ground, but then they hit us for six in the sky next turn. I think I'd rather not get hit for six in the sky. I'm gonna knots the land roval. Another protector of Gondor, my lord. We did see a lot of those, so this is the game they're going to come in swinging. I wish I didn't get rid of my uh, my one removal spell, because they played a big, scary creature that we want to remove. Well, there's a smite for one of these protector of Gondors. We'll just shoot whichever one they give flying to. But that's not going to kill the bird. There's the Flame of the West. Doesn't look particularly good this game. I like all these cards. Double blue. Double blue and three. I can draw three cards and then I can still smite. Should probably just get full defense mode though. Make sure I've got blocks all set up on the ground. So, rally. Surrounded by orcs. And I've got the smite up thanks to the Peller Gear survivor. I think these are our blocks here. 4-4. Four, four. Can block a single 3-3 three, three and kill it without dying. 1-3 uh, and 2-1-1s one, can block a kill a 3-3. Three, three. And Smite the Deathless can shoot a flying 3-3. Three, three. Eagles of the North. Well, we're probably going to have to Smite that then, which means we're taking big damage this turn. Can we take eight? That two one first strike on the ground is not a good attacker. Luckily. Okay. Free kill. Chump. Blow up the other bird. Take eight, go to nine. Start taking six a turn, though. Hold up, they're at 14. Can I just kill them with enough spells? Four, five, six, seven damage on board. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They don't kill me on this attack, so if I leave everyone behind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can deal seven damage to them, putting them to seven life. Smite puts them to... Uh, five life, Lauren revealed to three life. Probably not. No, I don't have enough lands to play enough spells to kill them next turn, so I think I need to. I mean, I at least definitely block the human soldier. I think I am chumping as well. And I guess it is possible. I can kill them next turn, even chumping. Just unlikely. Deceive the messenger. That is going to be helpful for surviving. Could play Lorien Revealed and Deceive the Messenger thanks to Peller Gear Survivor. I guess that's all I get to play, but then Hithlay Knots plus Smite should definitely keep us alive the turn after that. And, well, not just keep us alive, that should just kill them. So we Deceive this turn, and then Knots Smite is going to kill them on the crackback. 
Andrew looking real bad in this deck, as we imagined. Well, I thought it would look better than this. I thought I would still want to play it and equip it at some point, but that is really not how this game is played out. Just send everybody in the sky, it looks like. I wonder if these are all their Protector of Gondors. They've drawn three this game. I think we only saw three. I think we saw four of them. They're down to four. We are down to six. But I have two spells in hand to cast. Shoot a protector of Gondor. Tap another one, scry and draw, just in case they have instant speed life gain, which I don't think exists, but maybe it does. Nope. At least not in their deck. There might be some piece of instant speed life gain in this format I'm forgetting about. I know there's Shellab's Ambush, but they need three mana up, because it's one mana to make the food and two mana to sack it. I can't think of any other instant speed life gain. Either way, much better round one than I thought. Again, I think... Honestly, I think our opponent's deck is probably better than ours by a bit, just against the general meta. I think it's just a better build of black-white than our deck is a build of blue-red. But we drew pretty well. We had some some strange draws that, that lent themselves to some weird plays that worked out well for us. Like, we got the full mill victory game one into the full ring burn victory game two. I'll take it. We start off with a victory in round number one. And here we are for round two. We're going to start off on the play. This is a real awkward opener. We're hoping to get a lot of mileage out of Arwen's Gift here. Smite to stay alive, then Arwen's Gift to make sure that we have some actual plays this game. Playing against a green deck drawn to a Hithlane Knot's great start to our draw steps. Any non-land cards are great draws. There's a Meridoc Brandy Buck, which I'm just going to immediately shoot to slow our opponent down, because this is a slow hand. And uh, I guess Meridoc, I think I called it Meridoc. Meridoc is a pretty annoying card to get a food every single turn. They've got a Sting on board now, so anything they play could have haste if they slap a Sting onto it, but it's two extra mana to do that. That will still matter a lot in the late game when they're top decking creatures, when uh, we both have a ton of lands down. So that will be pretty powerful later. There's a Gandalf Sanction, great draw there. Also, Pelagir Survivor's great draw. All this stuff is awesome. I'm going to hit or discard a land here. Nothing stuck on mana here, it looks like. Draw two, discard another land. Draw Pelagir Survivor, I can just Arwen's Gift for now. It's awkward that I have to choose between the two drop that makes mana in the future, or the four drop that's much more mana efficient for this turn. I'm just gonna play the Survivor. We could consider Cast Into the Fire in this matchup, depending on what their second color is. If they're like green-white and we see a bunch of 1-1s and 3-1s from them, Cast Into the Fires could be reasonable because they can exile a Sting or they could shoot some 1-toughness cards. Could get the Knots out of the way, but I'd rather just keep it. Oh, we found our win condition, I guess. I'll shuffle a smite back, and it's going to be forever until Sanction does anything anyway. Actually, no. If I'm shuffling one card, and that doesn't really do anything. Never mind. I'm going to submit zero. All right. Here's our win condition. Just go for it. This might be the game where Andril earns its keep here, or Andril. Not sure the pronunciation. I mean, because 
Let me just get to move it over to a flyer next turn. Yeah, that this should just win the game, honestly. Just a 4-2 flyer that's spitting out two 1-1s one every turn with flying. It's just absolutely ridiculous. When we're not under any pressure. We're just used to being under pressure because we are a slower deck. We are the uh, the defensive deck rather than the aggressive deck generally. We just got lucky where our opponent had a slow hand here, so we get to be the aggressor with the Onderil and probably take that to victory. So they are green-white. We still haven't seen any one toughness cards though, so I'm still unsure about cast into the fire. It can get rid of Sting, yes. But if they don't draw a Sting and they have no one toughness creatures or other artifacts, then we're doing Stone Cold nothing with it. No matter which one I tap, they get a food token, which is a little annoying, but just tap Frodo, I guess. Draw a card. Uh, surrounded by Orcs with Gandalf Sanction. Actually real. Actually a real draw. Ooh, Saruman's Trickery is another real draw. Need another mana to do that? Because I'm definitely going to attack with the Survivor rather than spending mana to move the blade over right now. I want to play Orcs and Trickery, but I can't. Oh yeah, Stink and Untap? Alright, well, this still doesn't kill a human peasant. It would just chump. Cool, they're down to 10. Honestly... With the Gandalf Sanction in hand, I think I just mill myself with this Surrounded by Orcs. Try to get some instant sorceries in the grave here. And have that Gandalf Sanction find the victory, even if they somehow would survive otherwise. Alright, there is the concession. Andril just being a ridiculous card. Flame of the West. Spitting out spirits all over the place. So we have saw two copies of Mariadoc Brandybuck. We saw Frodo Baggins. We saw Sting. I do not think that is enough information to throw cast into the fire in. Because their white creatures could just be like... Build a Pony and Frodo and Nimble Hobbit and stuff. Those are all like three toughness or more. They don't necessarily have the three ones and the two one took reapers and stuff where the cast into the fire have multiple targets and I'm never going to cast a cast into the fire on a food token so the only artifact that we saw was sting and I don't think we side in cast into the fire just for a sting. I think I'm just going to run it back. I guess I could again just cut a land for something since we'll be on the draw here. Cut a land for one Greyhaven's Navigator again. Although it doesn't look particularly good against their creatures, because 2-2 two -two just kills it. Frodo is always going to be a ring bearer, so we can't even uh, block the Frodo well. I actually don't think Greyhaven's Navigator looks good at all in this matchup. I do want to. I guess if I do want to cut a land, we cut a land for Cast into the Fire. And hope. Or just like a Dreadful as the Storm. So I could block uh, Frodo with a survivor and make it a 5-5 five, five or something. I don't know. This is awkward. I'm just going to keep the land in. Not a huge fan of any of our sideboarding options until we know more about their deck. This is a great opening hand. Good grief. Turn 3 Fiery Inscription after a Peller Gear survivor for Mana Ramp. Means turn 4 we can play Smite and Trees in Visengard. And now we're ramping up into a Lorien Revealed for the draw three to get ahead in card advantage. There's Meriadoc Brandybuck again. Guess that should be expected. We saw two copies game one, so probably have a lot of them. They've got at least two. This is a free attack for them, so we definitely block. 
there's zero reason for them not to attack. They get a food token from doing so. So, nine times out of ten, that is just them getting the food token rather than having a combat trick to kill our Peller Gear survivor. So we take those blocks. All right, their Shire Terrace is going to find a Plains. They're going to drop an Errand Rider of Gondor. Excellent, excellent card. Three mana, three, two plus draw card. Get a head and card advantage right quick and early. And draw into the white combat trick. Ooh, it's You Cannot Pass, which is just a removal spell thing. Okay. Not so much for Lorien revealed next turn. Or Smite Treason. I can't do either of those. Kind of feel like I should kill Meriadoc, but I'm almost just more concerned with the damage getting dealt to me than the food tokens they have. But the food fire inscription is just not going to win the game, but that's it's okay, I think. To take five on the crackback. I don't know. I guess I guess we probably do kill Mary. We might have to cycle the Lorien revealed also. Sets up the future Gandalf sanction better and we want to hit more lands so that we can play removal and card draw on later turns. They're just going to have their second Mary in hand, I swear to god. Our combat trick here, Mithril coat. All right, I mean, that works. I guess we can put Cast into the Fire in, but honestly, I don't think Mithril Coat is very good, so I'm not that concerned about it. Wait, what the heck? Oh, Smite makes it lose Indestructible? Oh, that's disgusting. We definitely don't need Cast into the Fire then. That was a blowout. We both forgot about the flavor text to smite the deathless. That creature loses indestructible till end of turn. Okay, and they had the second Mary in hand. Wow. All right. Well, there's the second Mary. At least we got them to spend three men on nothing. So that's profitable, but that is kind of annoying. They got blown out because they didn't fully read our card, and then they just have Mary anyway. Just kill Mary again. Play an Andra with no creatures on board. I think we just wait till we have a creature out and spend five mana to play and equip it in one turn. Could play a Trees and Visengard, put a Smite back on top and be real annoying. I think that's, well, got the Sanction. So the Trees and Sanction is like the combo for later. But I can't just take five here. Like, I'm going to win the long game most likely, so maybe it's just Sanction and then Treason the Sanction later. I don't think I can just play Arwen's Gift right now. Yeah, I guess I'll just Sanction. The higher power creature. Keep slowing them down for now. We just do everything we can to survive these early swings, and then we will win eventually off of card advantage from Arwen's Gift, finding a creature for Onderil. As long as I don't die to this stuff. Well, I might die to Stalwarts of Osgiliath. I guess they're not drawing two a turn, so it's just a 4-3, but even that is threatening. I could play Treason and Andril in one turn. I would rather just Arwen's Gift and hope to find a two-drop of some kind. Okay, found a smite for the stalwarts. That's pretty big. They shouldn't have any like instant speed ways to draw a card in white or green, so I can just respond to any card draw with smite. Wait till they spend the mana to put a mithril coat on something and then blow it up. 
Mithril Coat is really bad against our deck, apparently. I didn't even know it was really bad against our deck, but now that I know how Smite works, now I do. Ridiculous. It's so rude. Like, it exiles if the creature would die, and the creature loses indestructible. Like, why is it gotta do all that? It's ridiculous. Now I can double surround by orcs myself, and then treason the sanction back after I do that? More interested in doing that than uh, the Nondural for now, then. Although, I'm under enough pressure, I'm gonna have to probably trade this army into whichever attacker they have that isn't indestructible. Well, no, they've got a million food tokens. Taking three damage a turn at 13 life. I'm still fine right now. Maybe it is going to be Onderal. Either way, it's surrounded by orcs that turn so that I have the creature for Onderal even if I'm going that way. Death Touch Indestructible. Oh lord. <laughs> oh yeah, and I can't block that because it's the Ring Bearer, so that is going to be 3 damage down to 10. That's fine. The less fine part is the amount of food they have, but I guess just our incredible Mythic Rare Sword is going to beat them through the food. So that's probably the plan. Boring as it is to try to win the same way twice in a row, that's probably how we're trying to win. Samwise, oh, do they have historic cards in grave? No, but that is incredible. Every creature they play comes with a food token, and they can sack three to return a historic card. So if Mary dies, they can use Sam to save Mary. If Sam dies, then Sam's just gone. All right, well taking five damage next turn but then i'll have a ton of blockers i think i gotta do this just right now also go surrounded by orcs myself then treason um sanctions at eight another surrounded by orcs puts it at nine minimum because the orcs does that and i mill myself six it probably puts it at like 12 or something treason Puts it 12 to 13. It's not going to be lethal. I think I have to play the sword now and then surrounded by orcs treason in one turn next turn. And they might even have to just trump with Samwise here. At least consider it. But they just spend all their mana eating food next turn, so probably not. Okay, our life total is going to get halved here, but I'll hold up uh, an orc and a 1-1 one -one flyer as a blocker. It's going to be a close game. Do also need to consider how much damage we could be doing. If I attack with everybody and cast both these spells, but I don't think it'll be enough. Like, if they just pass turn, six mana up is gonna be three times three, nine life. They'll be at 16. Take seven, eight. They take seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That is definitely not enough. Yeah, so I just need to hold up blockers. They're going to be at 16 life, and we can deal 12. Oh no, I guess I could have lethal- if they had nothing, I could have lethal them, because I forgot about the amass as well. This would be an 8-8. Eight, eight. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus 4, 17 damage. If they have nothing, if they have instant speed interaction, they would kill the orc army, and then we lose. So this is the safer play. I think I probably should have just went for it, though. All risk, all reward there. This probably also wins, though. We'll find out. 
find out next turn. How big that sanction? 11? Okay, so 11. Probably enough. Next turn. Yeah, green-white doesn't have a lot of ways to clear out a gigantic orc army at instant speed. They could have like a hobbit sting. They could have killed it in response to me amassing. Sorcery speed, there's definitely fog. If they have two removal spells, we're dead. If that's the only removal spell, then they're dead. Looks like the only removal spell. Maybe a combat trick kills us here, though. If we don't die, they do next turn. A lot of combat tricks in green-white that would kill us here. Mainly just in green. It's the, uh... I guess there's actually not that many big combat tricks. There's Pippin's Bravery. They don't have enough mana for the plus three, plus three thing. Okay, they look pretty dead. Yeah, just eat some food. Okay. Pretty lucky for us. I think I did not play this out correctly. I think I should have went for the all-in attack with the orc army last turn. Because the list of outs that they would have to kill the army and, and make sure we don't lethal them is pretty low. Plus, I think... I mean, honestly, green-white... I guess there could be stew the conies with their death toucher. That would be the main out. Like if I did all this work amassing that giant orc and then attacked with everybody and they had stew the conies for their death toucher to shoot my giant creature at instant speed, we would have lost that game really hard. But if they just had like Hobbit Sting or something, they would have had to use it before the orc was super, super big. So I would at least know before I declare attacks if the orc was going to die and it wasn't going to be lethal anymore and then I could hold up blockers still. So yeah, I think I should have just went all out there earlier. But obviously this line worked out too because they didn't have the double removal. But seeing the fog on the Barrow Downs, that was really starting to look like the potential worst case scenario where they just go fog, hobbit, sting, and then I die because of the, the way that I played that out. So certainly could have went a lot worse than that. I don't think I'm playing perfectly today, but our deck has really been doing its best. Hitting the ridiculous Mythic Rare Sword twice this matchup was pretty busted. And we just get to win the first two rounds, so no matter what, solid win rate uh, traditional draft today. At least two wins out of these three rounds, but we'll see how it all wraps up as we head into the final round. Here we are for the final round on the play. Solid keep here. Hoping I don't have to lion Hoping I don't have to island cycle the Lorien revealed, but I will if I have to. Which is basically just if I don't draw any lands the next couple turns. Hopefully I can cast Hithlane Knots before I decide. Alright, that's four out of five mana. We probably get to keep our draw three and actually cast it. If this is a mirror match, just a Battle Scarred Goblin should be okay if they're on blue-red as well. Because if they don't have the cheap burn, then we can get some free damage with this thing. Okay, they don't have the cheap burn, but they do have the Flamesmith, which can't block it well and dies to deceive the messenger. So we're still attacking in, for sure. Flamesmith is a very high priority target to kill, so I'm definitely not going to tap it down here. If they want to try to declare an attack with it, I will try to kill it with Deceive the Messenger, which they could definitely have their own instant speed interaction to make sure the Flamesmith survives through, but it is still worth an attempt to kill, especially if they declare an attack after this. If they declare an attack after the Quarrels end, that's just a free kill, and we are very happy with that. Very, very good. Deceive the Messenger... Busted magic card. I love it so much. Glorious scale now. 
don't actually think Gloria Scale is particularly good in this matchup, but a little interested. Holding it up. Blue Red Mirror match, we probably don't actually want to mill them out because they probably have a Gandalf Sanction or two as the reason to push into this strategy. I do kind of want to play Surrounded by Orcs right now so I can dome them for six damage. So I guess I'm going to mill myself. The issue with this is if they're on the exact same deck that I'm playing and they have their own Surrounded by Orcs to mill me also, then if I don't draw Gandalf Sanction, I will actually just be getting milled more than I want to. But I do think we play Surrounded by Orcs here and just get that extra damage in while we can. And then we can hold up all our nonsense next turn. If they don't just straight up removal spell the orc army, it probably gets another attack in this next turn as well, which is good. So it's not even like I'm getting just six damage out of playing that right now. It's like I get six damage now and then another four next turn, probably. Maybe even tap down something to get another six damage in. Foray of orcs. Well, goodbye, Battle Scarred Goblin. It's nice knowing you. And it was a pretty good thing I didn't hold up. My Gloria scale, because it would have done flat out nothing. Could smite this army, but I'm cool with a chump. They are not gonna chump. Alright, we've got a smite and a Gloria scale. To hold up, they're at 8 life. Swarming of Moria, they're gonna make that army a 4-4. Four, four. Do I want them to stack it up higher, or do I want them to get a separate creature? I think I want them to stack it up higher and we just tap it down. I mean, if they want to attack with it, I'll just let them attack with it. But we'll tap it down as a blocker so we can hit them for 4 again, so they're down to 4. Dead in one more swing from our orc. All right, they've got three mana up still. Peller Gear Survivor, that I will counter. They do not want to attack with the Orc Army, so we'll tap it and scry one and draw a card. Mountain for Lorien Revealed is fine. Yeah, kill the one one on attacks, draw three. Seems like a fine turn to me. Bunch more card draw between Arwen's Gift and the Bath Song now, and I can cast either of those while casting Smite the Deathless the same turn. Goblin Fire Leaper. Well, there's the smite target, because if they have enough red mana up, they can have this blow up our 4-4, four, four, which is not cool with me. So I'm going to smite that immediately, while I still have Deceive the Messenger mana up if something real weird happens. Deceive is going to make our Orc Army a 5-5 five, five at instant speed, and there's a 1-4. Oh wow, that's really annoying. Okay, well, I'm still going to attack in. Alright. Deceive still gets them. But the Fire Leaper, if they get enough red mana, they have to double buff to kill a 5-5. Five because five, it's got to be 3 power. Then 3 damage on blocks, 3 damage when it dies. So they need to draw another Mountain. I could Treason of Isengard and they have to have another removal spell, but there's nothing I really want to put on top. I guess another Deceive is fine, or Smite is fine. I'll just put a Smite on top, because I want to use this mana. And if I draw that off the top next turn, I can play a 4-drop and Smite in the same turn. And again, this way, now they need to be able to triple pump the Fire Leaper. They gotta make it four power. Because I guess they can already double pump it. Because they can sack their treasure and use their mountain and make it a 3 1. 
block and trade into a 5-5. But now they legitimately need another mountain to trade into our 7-7. Seven, seven. Maybe... Actually, now that I think of it, I was going to say maybe still should have went for Deceive. But now that I consider the fact that the Treason made it a 7-7, seven, seven, I think I definitely should have still just went for Deceive over Smite. Because that would just one-shot them if they let it in. A mass one, and it's an 8-8, eight, eight, boom. So that forces blocks. Alright, well, I'll exile the Kingfisher... And they have to consider that we could have instant speed amass to kill them here, so they probably have to chump block. They might not, but I think we get the free kill. Yep, get the free kill there, and then we drop the bath song. Draw four, discard two instead of scry two, draw uh, two right now. And there's the deceive, so that we do kill them in one shot on another attack. I always forget I have like three copies in here because I have like three in all my blue decks always because I love it. Ooh, Rally's very good here. Multiple trump blockers. It's pretty important. Could find a Gandalf Sanction off Bath Song plus Arwen's Gift. Like, we're going to dig far. Scroll of Isildur is also really good. They get to uh, tap and stun the orc next turn. To slow us down. Okay, no sanction off that, but again, I get to scry two. I get to dig four cards deeper, and if sanction is in the next four cards, we win immediately. So I am going to dig. I'm going to hold up double blue uh, if I draw the counter spell. And there you go. Sometimes you just do it. Boom. All right, mirror match, and it went very nicely, game one. Yeah, their deck is very good, once again. Round two, I think, was our least scary deck from our opponent, but that's just because they're green-white. Green-white's just not that scary in general. But I think our round one and round three opponent have had some real nice decks. Flame of Anor, Scroll of Isildur, they've got their own survivors, they've got the Foray of Orcs. Nice two for one there. Oral's End for the card draw, the Flamesmith to shoot. They probably have at least one Fiery Inscription or Gandalf Sanction, they just never drew it. So we worry about that. So they have uh, Fire Leaper, they have 1-1 one, one Human Tokens, they have Flamesmiths. I actually think Cast Into the Fire is a fine addition. We throw in a Cast Into the Fire and cut a land for it since we're on the draw. Uh, but I don't think anything else in our sideboard is particularly good for the Mirror Match. Yeah, one Cast Into the Fire seems, seems alright. Particularly if we get a really lucky board state where we can kill Flamesmith or Fire Leaper with it. Like, if I can kill Flamesmith or Fire Leaper and, like, 1-1-1 one, one, one token or 1-1-1 one, one, one army, I'll be pretty happy with the cast into the fire. I don't have to get the magical Christmas land of killing, like, a Flamesmith and a Fire Leaper. But one or the other, especially if I kill one of them and a 1-1 one, one token, that should be pretty good. So we'll run the cast into the fire over the Swamp 8. Or Mountain 8. And if they secretly have their own Flame of Onderil, we can exile it. Or the One Ring for huge flavor value. Well, this is not keepable. This is not great either, but it is keepable. I don't really ever want Sanction in the opener. We want to draw that much later. And we don't have any good interaction here. Now I've got Deceive. If Deceive was in the opener, I would have slam dunk kept this. But yeah, now I have Deceive. And an Isolation is the first two draws, I think. 
which was really nice. Actually, I guess isolation might have been the opener. Two, three, four, five, six. No, I put a land on the bottom. So yeah, we drew two pieces of interaction really early, and that's the only thing I was worried about. Now we even drew the Saruman's trickery. They're just holding mana up here. I guess I just... Hold up my own trickery. Very suspicious. We're going to be suspicious together, my opponent and I. Cast into the fire is the draw. Well. I mean, somebody's going to blink eventually. And as long as we're not blinking, at least I'm damaging them. Gandalf. Okay, they blinked. Gandalf's not okay. Now a Willow Wind probably will have to sanction that once it's big enough. Actually, I should surround it by orcs myself, and then the sanction's going to be big enough real quick. Surrounded by orcs myself, and then I get to attack in as well, because I've got a 4-4, so we get that life total going down quickly. Oh, there goes my fiery inscription. That's a little bit sad, but it is what it is. I think I'd rather hit for 4 and then take 0 on the crackback than hit for 5 and take 3. So I'm going to hold Deceive until they try to hit me with Willow Wind, and I'll just prevent that damage. Although with the Gandalf Sanction combo win in hand, maybe I should just consider our life total irrelevant and just use the Deceive to hit for one more earlier. Put them to 13 instead of 14. Scroll of Isildur, that's gonna slow us down. That's for sure. They're already gonna tap both my creatures anyway and put stun counters on them, so I just slap them with both of them. And then... Isolation the Willow Wind. I don't even have to, they can hit me for three for a turn, that's okay, but I do want to put Isolation in my graveyard. Cast into the fire, looking super bad, but it would have just been a land anyway. Although a land would be better here. Guarantee that we have the land drop next turn. It'd be a mountain. Alright, there's the stun counters. They are at 8 life. We've got a Gandalf Sanction at 5. No creature. I will try to isolate then. Just right now. Alright, it works. <laughs> Holding up the uh, double blue and one, I see. Makes sense. Surrounded by orcs, me. I do appreciate that. Now sanction is lethal. If we can get it to resolve, so if they're ever not holding up double blue one. So, unless this exact card is the Saruman's trickery, I think I'm supposed to not sanction right now. So if they've got the sink the trickery in hand to counter the sanction, they'll have it now or next turn. And if they don't, I don't even kill them anyway. So give them a turn. Oh yeah, they're gonna draw one card we don't know about. Okay, so now if the counter spell was in their top two that we didn't know of, so the card above or the card below the Willow Wind then it's worse to have waited on Sanction. But again, it would just be Sanctioning to put them to three to get them in a position where we can kill them with our Orc next turn. I think we probably still want to try to have it be just Sanction immediate lethal and just get lucky with them not having the counter. 
Either way, if they have the counter, we get got. If they hold double blue up. Maybe we'll draw well and we draw like an Arwen's Gift or something. So just like some kind of powerful, relevant spell that we can cast before a sanction. Oh, that's really good. They've got a ring bearer now. Not so worried about the extra two damage, but them having a ring bearer is a big deal. I mean... Wait. We're in an excellent spot now if they attack, because now they have to play a blocker or interact with one of our creatures, which means they probably won't have the mana to counter the Gandalf Sanction. Because if they just hold up the three mana to counter Gandalf Sanction with Saruman's Trickery, then they just take six on board. We don't have to cast it. We can just attack for six. So this is actually probably... I mean, it's fine with me, actually, thinking about it that way. If the game goes long, it's definitely going to be an issue that they're drawing a card, discarding a card every turn. But this gives us a really nice turn now. Because we could just send in the team. And they don't have interaction for that, so they're down to two now. I think I just keep them in these positions where they need to play multiple defensive blockers. So they might have to tap out of the counter mana. Four mana for Foray of Orcs would blow up my 5-5. Five five. Yeah, and they're holding up the counter mana. But if they attack, they are still taking one on board when they're at two. If cast into the fire, could shoot face. All right, so they're just holding up. Battle Scarred Goblin, Slam Dunk. Great draw, that's immediate lethal if it hits them. They let it through. If they did not have the double blue and one counter spell, they would not be playing like this. Because they're at two life right now. If they don't have the counter spell in their hand, they would not think that it's worth bluffing a counter spell to just be dead to a combat trick or a removal spell of our own. So we just cannot cast Gandalf Sanction. They just 100% have it. They would be using their mana as efficiently as possible and creating more blockers or spending all of their interaction, spending some card draw, whatever they could do to get in a better position on board. And just start milling them now. There's no way to kill the 5-5 five five if they block the goblin with the 5-5, five five, but if they block it with Willow Wind, I could cast into the fire. I think I just start milling them. And I think they scryed to the top, so I think I mill right now. I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't paying that much attention, but we'll see. Kingfisher, Fire Leaper, Willow, and okay, I kind of wish I didn't mill them because those would be great cast into the fire targets. If they cast four instants or sorceries this turn, we die if I don't block. They do eight damage on board, four instants or sorceries with inscription on board would be another eight. They've got a Gandalf Sanction, we die too. Yeah, I think we die to Gandalf Sanction even if they don't attack. At this point. One... No, they only have two instants or sorceries in their grave? Their deck is weirdly creature heavy. Which is still fine for Inscription, but I think Gandalf Sanction would actually just not be nearly as strong as it normally is in blue-red in their deck. 
Propeller Gear Survivor. Rally at the Hornberg. Shoot me for two. Slam dunk, kill those tokens. Opponent knows they have to let it resolve because they can't let us Gandalf sanction. We just got more lands. Eight life now. I mean, at this point, I'm just dying on the crackback, right? And they're hitting me for three in the sky. I'm going to have to chump the 5-5. Five, five. They attack with the 5-5, five, five, the 3-4. I have to chump the 5-5. Five, five. I'm dead to three spells. All right. At this point, we just prove that they've had the counter spell this whole time. Yep. Who would have ever guessed? And then we just die. Well, I don't think there was anything I could really do there. There might have been some way to push in for an extra two damage, like an extra one damage a turn for a turn or two could have gotten us there. Uh, but now I'm pretty sure we we're going to die this turn no matter what we did. I guess if I can barely survive this turn, then our best play would have been to just wait, and then maybe we top deck Fiery Inscription as our only out, because then I can play Fiery Inscription. They either counter it and then I sanction, or they don't counter it. Then I play Fire Inscription into Sanction. Okay, there's their own Sanction. Yeah, we were gonna die this turn. Okay, then I don't think there was anything I could do. Because if they have Sanction, even if I did go for the Fire Inscription out there, we were gonna die. Alright. Rough. Rough stuff. They just had the trickery. That's about it. Again, maybe we chip in for an extra point here or there, and that turns into lethal in the end. But I would bet a lot of money that they had trickery from the turn that they were holding up double blue in one. Pretty clear. They were not in a position they could be bluffing a counter spell up. Unless they're just an absolute madman that would rather bluff a counter spell than not die to removal off the top and stuff like that. Uh, again, I don't think we have a good sideboard for this, and also Cast Into the Fire looked pretty bad that game, so we're just going to put our um, our uh, 17th land back into the deck. And... Yeah. Just go from there on the play. See if being on the play is that tiny bit of extra momentum we need to get those two more points of damage to find a victory in game three and here we are for game three of the final round we'll be on the play we got a turn two goblin turn three inscription seems like an incredible start to me to me let's hope for the best there's our saruman's trickery we do not have a second blue source for it right now though and we get to resolve an inscription before they have the mana up for trickery. Which is phenomenal. Also, Survivor can't block our goblin. Battle Scarred Goblin, actual MVP in this matchup. However, I think I would rather have a turn two Survivor than turn two Goblin, so I'm like moderately scared. Survivor would definitely be a better start. That mana ramp is very good for spells. Their deck is less spell heavy than ours, though, so. Might not be that bad for us. Hit for one. Drop a swarming of Moria. Don't love trading Goblin for the army. I also don't love just smiting here. I think I just want to Arwen's Gift and go from there. Because next turn I can smite and trickery, which is really good. Oh my god, or I could deceive smite smite. Either of those is pretty impressive. Especially with an inscription on board. Three spells in one turn, six damage. I think I should have played my island instead of my mountain there. Because if I draw into my bath song to draw two discard one, I would much rather discard the third mountain than the than a third island if I draw into a third island. 
Plus, I could, if I draw into a third island, play Trickery and Deceive in the same turn. There's a Willow Wind. Big Flyer can't block the Battle Scarred Goblin, though, so we can smite the army, hit with the Goblin, and hold up Trickery next turn. Since our Goblin is our Ring Bearer, Willow Wind does not block it. There's the Bath Song. Could also try to deceive to find the kill here and then cast Bath Song instead of holding up Trickery. And then I could save the Smites for later. I think that seems okay to me. It actually seems okay to me to even just do this and then hold up Smite or Trickery. Oh, wait, I'm not holding up Trickery. I'm an idiot. Forgot I did not have Triple Blue. I was literally just talking about it. This is still fine. We can smite the Survivor, but I think I should have done that before they untapped. One, two, three. Is it another Swarming Gamoria? Oh, they're just going to blow up our Battle Scarred Goblin with their Gandalf Sanction for two. Fear Fire Foes. That's really annoying. Yeah, well, that worked out really badly for us. Smite hold up trickery would have played out way better. Just gonna kill Survivor. They're probably holding up like the creature counter spell or something here. That's why they're not attacking with the Peller Gear Survivor. Alright, we're back at it again, playing it out very suboptimally. Another Deceive. Bath Song, hold up Deceive. Or just hold up Trickery Smite. I think I need the Bath Song to find something proactive. Another Deceive? Well, we keep all the Deceives. If I just cast six more spells, they'll die, and that's four more already. And then I draw two, discard a card again to find a fifth. And Deceive isn't super proactive, but it does make a 1-1 one -one to crack back with if they don't play another creature. Okay. I think... I'd rather... Kill a 1-1, one, one, then crack back with a 1-1 one, one here. If they let me, if they don't just removal spell my 1-1 one, one army before blocks. Yeah, now that they played a rally, I think it's just stop all the Willow Wind damage and kill a 1-1. One, one. Remember if we've seen them cast any deceives. We've got a dreadful as the storm. They're just gonna go for big damage there, go for the five damage. There's a surrounded by orcs. That's pretty expensive. Oh my god, Rally at the Hornberg is such a draw. That is such a draw. Yeah, I'm gonna discard this surrounded because that's expensive. But rally for just insta damage is huge. Then I can play trickery and deceive or smite and deceive. But this puts them to dead to three more spells, and I have three more spells. I just can't cast them all in one turn. I think we're just going to deceive again, holding up the trickery. So if they cast anything, we get to cast a trickery, which pings them with the fiery inscription. Down to four. We're at 11. I think I take this. Four instant sorcerers in grave. Unless they have like two copies of Gandalf Sanction, but then I can smite my own creature. But I think I just take this. Because they'd have to like dreadful as the storm into land Gandalf Sanction to kill me, and they're definitely dead on the crackback. 
They're at four life, facing three one ones. Got a smite and a trickery. We can cast both easy. There's a Lorien revealed as well. Shuffle all the instant sorceries back in, I guess. Might as well. I don't have a sanction in hand. Do I still have the mana for trickery? Yes, I still have the mana for trickery thanks to the double blue that the saga gave me. So we cast the draw three. And they scoop them up. That's a 3-0. That is as best as you can do in traditional draft because it is three best of three rounds. So that is absolutely phenomenal. That means we're getting major prizes, 2,500 gems, six packs, and two play-in points. For those who don't know, the play-in points, if you have 20 play-in points, you get to play a qualifier play-in event for free. So you can use 20 play-in points to enter one of those. So... Great, great, great value there. Up a thousand gems. Keep all those extra packs. And I'm pretty happy with that out of this deck. Honestly, as I was saying during the draft, black seemed to reel, reel open pretty often. Um, I guess not that it was super, super open later on, but we were getting a lot of like Uruk High Berserkers wheeled to us. So I think I probably should have ended up in one of the blue-black controlling archetypes. You know, Fell Beast is the top end. Torment of Golem in the middle is really good in that archetype. Black Breath solid in that deck as well. Um, especially in best of three where you can sideboard it in and out depending on what you're playing against so i don't know if i drafted perfectly here i think the best deck we could have ended up in was blue black some of that was that we were opening good black cards and getting past good black cards early in the pack which just means that a lot of good black cards were getting opened early but i also think i was seeing enough wheel that black was open enough to be there instead the only reason we were really in red was gandalf sanction plus inscription getting scooped up in pack one and that was kind of the only reason to be in red as you can see from the deck there was plenty of blue flowing around i think being in blue was a great place to be here but even sticking to blue red the entire draft pretty much we ended up with like six red cards total like and one of them is a goblin, which is super filler. Uh, but it played really well in the last round. That played well against their 1-3 bodies for sure. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I... I don't... I'm pretty sure I did not draft perfectly. Uh, I guess I drafted well enough. So I'm really happy with this result out of this draft. Because I think, I think I draft a little below average, a little mediocre. Very happy with my read to be in blue. I think blue was a great spot to be in this draft pod. Um... But we opened up a really nice bomb that won one of our rounds entirely by itself. And uh, we got pretty lucky in the games because, again, I think I played pretty mediocre today. There were a lot of mistakes I was noticing uh, in terms of sequencing, um, choosing what my priorities were, uh, like letting my opponent blow up that inscription that one game, stuff like that. Um, but it all just turned out pretty well for us. Got pretty lucky in that one. And find a 3-0, it definitely happens. Sometimes... Every now and then, it is better to be lucky than skilled, so we'll take it. Three win run in the traditional draft, grab our massive prizes, and wrap up the draft there. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the videos. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can click the join button below or check out the Patreon link. Other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more. Magic Arena.